Hey, John from Agile Off-Road. Uh, one thing, you, if you've been watching us, uh, you've heard that we lost the drive shaft on the front of our Sprinter at one point. So this is the 23 all-wheel drive, and here's the drive shaft. You'll notice that this end here that doesn't bolt on, there's actually a small C-clip, and there's an O-ring to kind of keep dirt out. And what happened was this unit here failed. It came back and it popped off. So after replacing the drive shaft, we bought a new drive shaft, which Mercedes had in stock. We put that in, came with new hardware and everything, put it back on, took it off-road, it failed again. So it's been coming off. So what we did is we just proactively came up with our own idea, and what we've got is it's called the safety spacer. And this is designed for the all-wheel drive sprinter. And it's basically, um, it's a spacer that allows us a little bit more room in there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it on the back side of the one where it bolts on, the back uh, CV, and it takes load off of this end here. This, you can actually see where this failed, okay? And what happened was, is it came out beyond the spline. Uh, we'll get you some better pictures of it when it's apart. Uh, but when the spline comes out, it came out and it cocked in there and the van became literally undrivable at speed. Luckily, it was pretty close by. They limped it in here at about two miles an hour. Now, keep in mind on the all-wheel drive, if you do have a front drive shaft fail, you can actually remove the drive shaft and you can still drive the van. So, still, still works without it, but uh, we're gonna install this. At this end here, it's gonna allow us a little bit more give. It's gonna free everything up. And what we're feeling is, is that just the off-road, we're getting a lot of movement in the front differential. We've actually installed a camera on this. We're seeing the front differential pivot this way, the transmission pivot, transmission, transfer case, and engine pivot towards the back. So we feel that it's actually kind of pulling on this. Here you can see how it kind of moves. So I'll let Glenn show you how it installs. It's a pretty easy install. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and show how to install the spacer. Uh, it's a piece of 6061 T6, uh, hard anodized. Uh, it registers really nicely on the CV and also on its opposing side. Um, so it fits nice and tight, no stop. So to remove the factory dry shaft, what I found works best is I put a strap wrench around it to hold it, keep it from rotating. Factory hardware is a T55. I'm gonna go ahead and use a ratchet wrench. Air ratchet. We're not gonna be reusing the factory hardware. Uh, we have new hardware that will be supplied with the spacer. It's longer, it's a 12 point, grade 11, real high quality bolt. It is also gonna come with a 10 point, a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. Just about got the last two bolts out here. Can remove the strap wrench. Go ahead and remove that. So in order to put this spacer in, if you see, there is not much plunge in the, in the whole, whole assembly. So it's a little tight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this over the dry shaft first. We're gonna lift the dry shaft up and it'll register over the CV. Like so. And then you'll be able to slip it down. You'll be able to slip over the slip on the, uh, the billet spacer. And we're gonna go ahead and slide this down, register it in the transfer case flange. Now it's just a matter of lining up all the holes and uh, reassembling it with, with the new hardware. In the kit, it's gonna, also it's gonna be supplied with some little red Loctite. We're gonna reuse the factory retainer spacer, but put new hardware in it. A little bit of red, doesn't take much. Now we'll go ahead and line these up, throw it back together.
Now we're going to run in the new hardware. It's all started by hand. Make sure that the spacer is fully seated before you tighten anything down. And we're going to go ahead and just run the hardware in. Try and bring it up evenly. Okay. Now we can go ahead and torque the bolts. And it's uh, 50 foot pounds is what we're going to be torquing them to. Okay. Torque wrench set at 50. Let's go ahead and click them off. Okay. Strap wrench on. Okay. There we go. Got all six torqued to 50 foot pounds. Remove the strap wrench and uh, should be good to go. That's all there is to it.